In this video, we're going to be comparing two very popular home studio mics to help you decide if you should consider one for your home studio. Starting with the Rode NT1. This microphone retails for $269 and in the box you'll get the microphone, a shock mount and pop shield, an XLR cable and a cloth pouch to store your microphone. Going over the specs, this is a condenser microphone which does a great job at capturing every single detail out of your audio sources. However, this does make the microphone very sensitive, which means you will 100% pick up on room reflections as well as background noise such as a laptop fan or air conditioning system. So in order to get best results out of the mic, also invest in acoustic treatment. It has a cardioid polar pattern, which means the mic is most sensitive from the front. And when we take a look at the frequency response graph, as you can see, it has a very flat response, which gives this microphone a very neutral sound. Moving on, let's have a look at the Shure SM7DB. This microphone retails for $499 and it's the latest design of the classic SM7B. If you're familiar with that microphone, you know that it's one of the most iconic mics of all time, being the microphone that Joe Rogan uses in his podcast, Michael Jackson recorded Thriller, and pretty much the go-to choice when it comes to live streaming. However, the biggest complaint that people have with the SM7B is the fact that it's very gain hungry. This means that for a lot of people with older interfaces, they will need to crank up their preamps all the way up to get a reasonable signal out of the mic, which would often introduce unwanted hiss into the recordings, which is not ideal. So not only would you need to invest $400 on the mic itself, you would also need to buy an external booster like a cloud lifter and an additional XLR cable to connect them, which would bring the total price to more than $500. $50. But now, thanks to this new design, this is no longer an issue because Shure has included an active preamp with up to 28 decibels of gain built right into the mic itself. In the box, you'll get the microphone, two windscreens, a cable tie, and an adapter for your mic stand. When it comes to the specs, this is a dynamic mic, which means it's very focused sounding and it does a great job at background noise rejection. And like all dynamic microphones, it typically does not require phantom power, but if you're planning to use the built-in preamp, then you will need to engage the 48 volt switch on your audio interface. It also has a cardioid polar pattern, and when looking at the frequency response, as you can see, there's not a lot of hyped up frequencies, which makes this microphone very easy to listen to. On the back, it comes with four switches, a high pass filter to roll off the low end of your recordings, a presence boost, which will increase both the mid and high frequencies, and at the bottom, Bottom, you can choose to either bypass the preamp, making this essentially a standard SM7B, or engaging it and then selecting between 18 to 28 decibels of gain boost. So let's do some audio tests so you can hear both microphones in action. You're listening to the Rode NT1 fourth generation condenser microphone being connected straight into my Apollo interface without any post-processing, and this is what the mic sounds like. Now you're listening to the Shure SM7DB dynamic microphone being connected straight into the Apollo interface without any post-processing and this is what the mic sounds like. Back on the road in T1, but this time you're listening to the microphone with a bit of EQ and compression and this is what it sounds like fully mixed. Now you're listening to the Shure SM7DB microphone fully mixed. I have added a bit of EQ and compression and this is what the mic sounds like. I was waiting on a sign Wishing love would pass me by Then you came and made me see what was right in front of me
So what are my overall thoughts and who would I recommend each mic to? Before I share them with you, if you're getting value out of this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Starting with the Rode NT1. If you've watched my content for a while, you know that this is one of my favorite budget condensers because in my humble opinion, you do get a lot of value for $269. Not only will you get the microphone, it also comes with all the accessories you need to get started recording. But most importantly, I love the the sound of this microphone. It has a very warm and natural tone which will complement most voices pretty well. Not to mention you can get great results miking instruments like the acoustic guitar, piano and even drums. Also let's not forget that this microphone is advertised as one of the quietest mics in the world and it has an extremely low self noise. However this microphone's biggest con is that it's very sensitive so if you're trying to record yourself in an untreated room you might want to look at other microphone choices. But now let's talk about the Shure SM7DB. I'm also a huge fan of the sound of this microphone. It doesn't have a lot of hyped up frequencies, making it very easy to listen to for long periods of time, which is perfect when it comes to podcasting and live streaming. Also, I found that once you add a bit of EQ and compression, the mic really comes alive, which can be great for music production. Another pro is that unlike condenser mics, it's going to do a great job at background noise reduction rejection, which is perfect if you have an untreated room. However, out of all the microphones that I've tested here on this channel, it's the mic with the most noise in the signal. For that reason, I cannot recommend this mic for voiceover work. But ultimately, which microphone should you buy? When it comes to music production, I think you can get great results with both, but it really comes down to acoustic treatment. If you have an acoustically treated room, then choose the Rode NT1 because it's going to bring out way more detail out of your recording recordings, not to mention it can get you better results when it comes to recording instruments. However, if you don't have acoustic treatment and you're primarily going to be recording vocals, then go with the Shure SM7DB because it's going to give you much better background noise rejection and more isolation in your recordings. When it comes to voiceover work, the clear winner in my opinion is the Rode NT1. Because of its extremely low self noise, it's not going to add any hiss to your recording, which is essential for voiceover. Over. But if you want a microphone with that radio type of sound, then the clear winner is the Shure SM7DB. Since it doesn't have a lot of hyped up frequencies, it's very easy to listen to for long periods of time, which makes it perfect for both podcasting and live streaming. If you want to buy one of the microphones, the links are down in the description below. And if you want to check out another mic comparison, then make sure to click on this video.